Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Hi guys and welcome to One Minute Tennis Coach. Today I want to talk to you about the one-handed backhand and especially about how to get real power into your one-handed backhand. Now a lot of players from recreational level right up to high competition, when they're under pressure you see them slicing and slicing and slicing. And I think the reason for this is that they're not using the correct parts of the body to generate power and so they have to swing very, very quickly to get speed and this creates mishits and a lack of confidence in the stroke. So I'm going to explain to you what muscles we should be using and then as ever I'm going to show you a really simple trick on how to actually find the feeling of this and how to put this into your game and energize your backhand. So the natural way of making the stroke is to push the racket forwards using the lateral side of the arm and the tricep. And this is okay if we're hitting at slow speed or if the ball is very, very, very easy. But if there's any slight off-center hit, then this side of the arm is simply too weak to manage the stroke and it will lose the collision with the ball. And what I mean by lose the collision with the ball is every time we hit the ball, it's a collision between two objects, the racket and the ball. If I hit the middle of the racket, if I have a lovely soft grip here and I hit the middle of the racket, then the racket remains stable and so I win the collision. If I keep that soft grip and hit the edge of the racket, then now the racket is turning in my hand and I've lost the collision. Now with using the lateral side of the arm, even if you're swinging quickly against a fast heavy ball, anything but a center hit will result in you losing the collision, a bad feeling and the ball going totally out of control. So we need to replace using the lateral side of the arm with using the major muscle groups of the body, the pectoral muscles, the deltoids, the lats. But how do we do that? I mean, it's easy if you've learned the feeling from being a very small child, but once you've made the stroke in this way with the lateral side of the arm too often, then it's a very difficult habit to change. Here's a great way of getting the feeling of the stroke. Here I have an overgrip and nothing, it can be any type of overgrip, and I'm just going to lay the overgrip over my wrists, like so. And now I go into the stroke, it's just dangling over the wrists, I go into the stroke, take the racket back, and then I'm going to push forward just using the arm, which means I'm using the triceps and the lateral side of the arm. And the right arm takes the grip. But now, I want you to imagine that your hands are tied together, like with handcuffs, and you have to break the handcuffs to make the stroke. So they're tied together and I have to break the handcuffs apart. And now I go into the stroke in exactly the same way, same take back, and now I'm gonna break the handcuffs apart, pulling the left hand in that direction, the right hand in that direction, and separating the two hands as violently as possible. And now the overgrip will go in the left hand and then fall. Let me show you one more time. I just dangle this overgrip over my hands like so. And now I push forwards with the right hand and the right hand takes the grip. And this time I'm going to imagine that my hands have handcuffs on and I go into the last phase of the take back. And now I'm gonna separate my arms violently once again, pushing the left arm in that direction and the right arm in that's this direction with the racket. And again, this time the right arm is free and this is either left behind or goes with the left hand. When you get the feeling of breaking the chains and pulling the two hands apart, what's happening is that instead of the racket being pushed forwards with the lateral side of the arm, it is now being projected forwards from the chest, the shoulders, and the back. This has a lot of advantages, principally power, but also one of the difficulties of the one-handed backhand is swinging across the line of the ball. But with this concept where we're breaking handcuffs, then what happens is the body becomes very stable because instead of the arm dragging the body across, the body is projecting the racket away. Once you have the feeling for this, I suggest that you self-feed. 
This is better than a coach feeding to you and or a ball machine at first. And then when you get the feeling you want to go into a hand fed situation or playing off a ball machine and then putting it into a live rally. But when you hand feed, you have total control of everything. I'm gonna hit the ball in this direction for the, uh, for the benefit of the camera. So I'm just gonna hand feed and separate the two. And imagining as clearly as I can in my mind that I've got handcuffs that are gonna separate the two hands. Here and separate. And once again, here and separate. Try this now, see how it works for you and see how it really puts energy, power and stability into your backhand. And it also means that players who would revert to slicing at the slightest pressure will start to drive the ball with confidence, security and success. Let us know in the comments section how it works please. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel, it makes a big difference to us. And remember, if you need more help with your game, we do one-to-one -one online individual consultations. It's a very unusual service, but it really works. Uh, the link to that and other information on what we do is in the website below. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.